and to the wonderful Moran. Come on. More than that. Come on, Moran. Um, I'm always late to places by a few minutes, just five or six minutes late, which is enough to handle most friends and, and like dates. But it's not good with airplanes and flights because they always leave right on time. And I have all kinds of records that I set with making it from the parking lot to the airplane. I actually divide them by pre-9-11 and post-9-11. <laughs> pre-9-11, I used to make it, uh, th my record was uh, Boston Logan. I made it in seven minutes. So seven minutes before the plane, I'm parking my car. I see people boarding the plane from the other side of the, of the fence. I somehow make it, I rush, I beg, I tell people, look, it's, it's emergency, I have to get there. And I somehow make it on time to make it to the plane and board on time, only to remember when I'm at the stairs that my car is not locked. So from the plane, I click the, the, the fire alarm and lock the car, and ding, ding, and then I make it to the plane. <laughs> this was my record uh, in 2000. The post-9-11 record is, I think, uh, 17 minutes. It's in Burbank, and that's not really surprising. Everyone can make it in Burbank. <laughs> but being late to planes is not really a bad thing in the US. They just put you the next plane. It is trouble when you're in Israel and you fly international flights because they're really picky and if you missed the flight, there's only one the next day. And I missed a lot of them. The particular one that I'm talking about is the one where I was working for a high-tech company and we had to submit a report on time and I was working all night to submit this report and managed to do it and I was exhausted. And I told my boss, I'm gonna go home now to rest because I'm exhausted, don't call me. And she and did not call me for 20 minutes, and then she called me and said, I have uh, an emergency. I have to send you tonight to fly to Rome, spend a day in Rome, and then fly from there back above Israel and to the other side of the world to Hong Kong. There's an emergency, there's only one flight tomorrow from Rome because on Saturday there are no flights from Israel. You have to make it tonight. So somehow I run home, pack suitcase, rush to the airport, make, meet a, co a courier who had me the, the ticket because they didn't have e-tickets at the time. So I get a, a ticket and I get a reservation for a hotel, Hilton, Rome, and I make it to the plane. I sit on first row business class and I fly to Rome and I fall asleep. As soon as we get to the plane, I put my little carry on. That's the only thing I had above me and go to sleep. And I wake up when we land. I'm exhausted. It's 1 a.m. I take my suitcase and I leave the, the, the airplane and go outside and find a cab driver that speaks barely some English. I don't speak any Italian. And I tell him, take me to Hilton. He says, okay, okay. And we go and we drive for like 30 minutes to the Hilton Hotel in Rome. So we sit in the, in the ca cab and I'm starting to make conversation because I want to know something about Rome where I've never been before. I want to ask him things about the city so I can know what to do tomorrow. So I start asking him, tell me, what is the weather in Rome? And he says, uh, the weather in Rome, in a bare kind of broken English with all kinds of gestures, the, the weather in Rome is uh, like 25 degrees, it's perfect. So I say, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna get a t-shirt and, and use that. And then I ask him, so tell me, uh, what is it to do in Rome? And he says, well, you should just go outside of your hotel and you'll see you have the piazza and you have the Colosseum and he gives me a lot of details about the city. And I ask him more questions about the city and he gives me more answers and it takes about 25 minutes drive and we get to my hotel where I go to the receptionist and I say, um, I have a reservation under Moran for this place. And she looks on the computer and she says, no, sir, I don't see anything. And I say, no, this is impossible. I already made it to the flight. I already, I already was able to kind of do everything in four hours, make everything. You have to have my name somewhere. The, the company never makes mistakes. My name is somewhere in there. So she looks again. She says, no, sir, I, I can't see your name. I say, look under my company name. And she does and she says, no, sir, I can't see. And then I say, well, I luckily have the confirmation number. I'm gonna give it to you and you're gonna find it surely. So I give her the number and she types it. And as she puts the, the last digits, she turns pale. And she says, sir, your reservation is for Hilton Rome. And I said, oh my God, this is not Hilton Rome? She said, it's not, not Hilton, it's not Rome. You're in Malta. The plane had a stop in Malta and I just took off, took my suitcase, <laughs> took a cab and went to the hotel. And you know, everyone, and, and, and I traced back the conversation and I tell myself, I asked the cab driver, what is the weather in Rome? And he says, in Rome, it's 20 degrees. And I asked him, what is it doing in Rome? He says, in Rome, you go to the piazza. The entire time he was giving me detailed information about Rome where I was not at the time. So then I, I, I become kind of 
worried. And I tell her, what should I do now? She says, eh, it's not, don't calm down. I'm going to call the airport and we'll see. So she calls the airport. Turns out that they went to code red DEFCON 5 because an Israeli 23-year-old guy <laughs> with a suitcase disappeared from the airplane, took one suitcase, this, uh, flew business guys. So they, they guarded the entire airplanes in Malta. No one moves. And they're looking for this guy who disappeared. <laughs> And she calls and says, well, I have Mr. Surf here with me. He's in the, he went to Hilton, indeed, but in the wrong country. I'm going to send him back. So I find a cab driver, I drive back. And when I said I actually have records of seven minutes pre-9-11, my record was at that time three minutes. I take out the cab, two security guards take me, pull me from where I am, bring me straight to the airplane, three minutes, I make it. And then, you know, walk back to my seat where they just waited, take back, put my suitcase back on, close in. And everyone takes off 30 minutes more to get to Italy. Thank you. <laughs>